like I've gathered my thoughts. Based on a video I did regarding my 10 attributes that determine a favorite orchid, a request came out from Paige to narrow it down to my five favorite orchids based on those attributes, which has been posted. And on that video, another request came through from Michael. Thank you, Michael. That now the opposite should also be determined. Um, my five least favorite orchids, which proved quite difficult. It had me thinking along the lines of, um, I don't have any least favorite orchids because I wouldn't have bought them. The ones that I have are the ones that I want. But you know, digging deeper, I did come up with five, but I had to put it into five categories and show orchids as examples because there were some categories that actually have five orchids and that would have been taken care of right then and there. And then uh, the more I thought about it, the more attributes came together. So I've made a grouping and I'm going to show you the orchids in that grouping. And I think that they would then qualify as my least favorite with a massive disclaimer that it's not the orchid, it is other reasons. So let's get into that and have a look. Right, thank you so much for joining me. And my first little collection of orchids that you see here is, has, has to do with nurseries. And the fact that I ordered some orchids that I really wanted, but the nursery sends duds, dead or weak orchids. And in this case, you see, that would already be five. There's still some more in the collection, but I thought I would just touch upon some that we've seen before, give a visual, and if there is a visual update as well. In my collection, what I consider a dud or a weak orchid are the ones that after two years, that's all of these, the Hawaiara three years, have not performed, even though compadres bought, same time of year, same setup, etc., have done pretty well. And that to me is a sign that the nursery has sent me duds or weak orchids. This is my pseudoepidendrum crossed with Melanoporphyrum. And right at the beginning of the year, I was showing my delinquents, uh, as I call them, they are delinquents. I had this support right here, really, really tall, really high, because I wanted to, the orchid to pretty much see what I was expecting of it. And you can see that I have cut the support because it's just not happening. And slowly but surely, we might be seeing some improvement here because the crown is starting to grow a little bit, although it is very curly wrinkled leaves, but it's starting to grow and it has been in this state for two years, like that. But now that there's some sign of life happening up here, I am anticipating certain action has happened in the root department because it is pot bound. There's hope, but after two years, this is not a result I expect. Same with my Epidendrum embryi crossed with Capricornu. Same nursery, same time, same order. And you can see sticks and sticks were sent. And this growth was down here. And it's done literally nothing. And now it can be a super slow grower. But I would doubt that very much because I now have another new growth coming recently. And it is like triple as fast as this whole thing has been throughout the summer. So only this summer of 2020 did that little growth that came with two sticks start actually doing something of substance slowly. And I've seen roots growing in there. I was very tempted to do a pot cleanup because I have the old moss still on because I was spraying with hydrogen peroxide in order to avoid rot. But 
I was just also very hesitant. I just left it alone. Despite seeing new roots going down, I have this new growth and I'm just going to wait and see. But to me, by the looks of it, when I got it, it was a dead orchid, except that there was something down here this tall trying to grow leaves, similar to what I have here right now. So yeah, that's the only reason it's still with me. But this is all nursery examples here. This is supposedly my Oncidium varicosum, Baldin, and it came in a terrible, terrible state. I only had the little pseudobulbs in the back here, these guys back here, one of which released a slimy substance after I sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide and it had a gaping hole in it, and that was a slug that came out and I never thought it would amount to anything, but supposedly this is my varicosum bolden, and it's been growing every year. It's been giving me two new growths. These are this year's growths, so that's uh, not much to show for either. And it is pot bound, but it hasn't given me any blooms, so I do not know if it is a bolden, if it is a varicosum. It looks pretty small to me. It's behaving like a species, so I don't know. But again, nursery. To me, this is an example of a dud, like my Hawiara. Lava Burst is an example of a dud. This is three years in my possession, and I don't consider myself that terrible of a grower not to get a Hawiara Lava Burst to grow. I have mounted it on this Michael mount. This is a scrubby pad from a scouring pad from the kitchen as a last resort, and I have one new root growing down there. You can see it. This, to me, is a dud. It didn't look weak when I got it. On the contrary, it had two spikes, and it just went downhill super fast right afterwards. Now, I'm going to take the other ones away because I don't want them touching. And the reason I'm segregating these two is because the scale is constantly trying to attack them. So I have them set aside, I have my alcohol ready, I have my paintbrush ready, and I see and look over them every single day because scale really wants to go at these orchids just because they are so weak. And honestly, I'm thinking I'm done with them. And then they start with some root growth and some new growth, and then you're back to square one thinking, okay, Let's wait and see what they do for another year. And besides, The Little Stars was dedicated to all my Instagram followers, so I feel a little bit of a duty to keep up. Also, from the same order as the Epidendrums, and I'm gonna say it now, they're from Schwerter. If you've been on my channel from the beginning, you know I do not have a very, very good opinion of Schwerter, and that is being diplomatic. This is my Brassavola Little Stars, and this is my Kichara Kiss. And I am after two years seeing new growths finally on the Kichara Kiss right there. So that is my hope. I will be babying them. And I am seeing after two years some roots coming on my little stars, which in my opinion is too small to be a little star. So we'll come back to the whole mislabeling thing also is a factor with regards to not so favorite orchids because it's not what you bought. But there are roots coming and I'm going to just leave them be as they are right now. I am tempted to chop this part of the orchid off and start anew. Same with this area, but I'm going to just leave it to make sure that it can get strong enough, settled enough. It's the wrong time of year to be intervening right now. So I'm leaving it. But this is after two years. These to me are weak orchids and duds that make an orchid not a favorite. Anything non-bloomer is a category for me that makes it not a favorite orchid of mine. In that category, as an example, is my Tetratonia Dark Prince growing better this year. It's a scale magnet. It comes from Schwerter. 
but I've got them under control, I think. You can never be too sure, but it hasn't bloomed for me. At least the new growths that have come are looking a little bit stronger. This is one of the things with weak orchids, but in this category, it's about the non-bloomers, and I have others, but having said that, as an example, Tetratonia Dark Prince, my Lelia Zip, which I think is growing really, really well. It should have been repotted this year. I didn't get around to it. It's too late now, so I'll be watching it for next year. But it's done really well. It's grown beautifully with its new growths, and it hasn't bloomed. It's getting plenty of light, as you can see. All the freckles that should be there are there non-bloomer and here is my supposed yeah don't laugh but uh, this nursery classen they sent me the maxillaria tenuifolia and anybody in their right mind when you unbox this you know it's not a tenuifolia but they seem to think that it was and yes, this is my label, but I was just covering over what they had printed on it, so it is not. I don't know what it is. Again, it's not the orchid's fault, but it's a non-bloomer. It's been with me for three years. It is growing quite well now. It was very, very slow to get going, but now it's growing quite well, and I'm hoping to see some blooms. The thing with mislabeled orchids is you're gonna treat them according to what you think or what you believe, or what you suspect. But if they are completely different than whatever you're doing and treating them, it's not gonna bloom because you're not doing it correctly. That is why mislabeled orchids for me are a pain. And it can propel an orchid into being not a favorite. And once again, I'm just going to reiterate my disclaimer. It is not the orchid. It comes from the nursery and then you're going to try and do the best you can to get it to bloom. And I love Lelia Zip. I love the blooms. I just wish mine would bloom. So these are just examples for the category of non-bloomers. Another category I consider least favorite are the slow growers. No matter what you do, they are who they are. They do what they do and they'll take their time. And I've just brought out three examples. I mean, we all know paths are slow growers. The only thing that's good about these guys is some of their mottled leaves, the structures, super pretty, nice to look at. This is Delanatii. This is, after two years, I'm seeing a new leaf growing in the center. Two years of love and care and treatment. If something happens to that, then it's frustrating and that is a negative emotion. So <laughs> these paths, they become a least favorite because of their slow growing potential. Here's my Lelia Crispa. We saw her earlier this year and I potted her up in Ceramis and uh, Semi-Hydro. And this growth right here, that's all it's done all summer. And it's not even pot bound yet. You see how wobbly she is? Now I know there is a root going down in there because that is what she started off with at the beginning of the year. But I was not expecting Lelia Crispa to look like this after a full year growth. It's not even finished yet. Slow growing, just like the next example. I haven't seen this one for a long time. This is a juvenile. This is my Iricolor. Huh. Crisper and Iricolor. Oh boy. I could put them together with my Dimophorcus Lowii. I am super surprised about the Crisper. Not so much about the Iricolor, but the slow growth, what you've got going for is, yay, the anticipation that one day you'll see the blooms, if nothing happens. So there's always that little margin, that little edge of, I hope nothing happens. This is this year's new growth. Pretty nice, pretty good. And it's already started a couple of months back on its second new growth. But that one won't mature until spring, summer next year, because it's starting at this time of year, end of October, 
and that's just not ideal for an iri color. Nevertheless, and having said that, I am seeing that this growth has got some more oomph to it. This one was already quite substantial considering what I saw when it arrived. And it's easy for me to see that this one has yet another small level of substance to it, which actually shows me it's maturing <laughs> slowly, but we're on the right track. So slow growers, yeah, a category that I'm not particularly fond of. So my next category that propels an orchid into becoming a headache, least favorite if you would like to call it like that, seeing as we're in this subject, the ones that are prone to pests. No matter what you do, no matter how much silicon you try to pump into it, comes a time of year and the pests will still come. And as an example is my Dendrobium tortile and my Peggy Ruth Carpenter, my Bellara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And I only have these two as examples because they are prone to pests. Doesn't make them a not favorite orchid, all right? But just where the headaches are, that's what I'm discussing today, my least favorite. There, just move that a little bit different camera angle because they are quite big. So the tortile and Bellara, the example, mealybugs. Incredible. Every day, I'm looking at these guys. The new growths, they can start out fine and suddenly you'll see something and then they start to go at the crown. Every day, I'm with the paintbrush and with alcohol, just in case. They are not on there every day, but it is a magnet. The orchids that live next to these guys don't have mealybugs, just these guys. What I do with my tortilla, for example, as well, some people wait for their leaves to really just get dry and drop off. I don't. When I see a leaf doing this, you can see that there's still green left, but it's going yellow. This is on a deciduous cane. This is going to, they're all going to be bare come next year. Now for today, I've already taken the leaves off that I saw this morning. And this one's a little bit too soon but I don't wait for them to go dry simply because this one is such a mealy bug magnet. I take the leaf off when it is in this stage already because I can remove the majority of the sheath from the cane with the leaf at the same time. If I let it dry, it will just callus over right here and then I have a problem for next year. So it's just that the bugs just love it and I can spray, I can wipe, I can do everything, soapy this, soapy that, and I don't mind the work, I love my orchids. Mealy bug magnet par excellence. Peggy Ruth Carpenter comes in at the same rate, same circumstance, same situation. Here, when it comes to the spikes, I am peeling away these little sheaths that are sur surrounding the buds, exposing them, because that is where they are. They're not so much bothered about the leaf apex or anything like that. They are in these sheaths here, and they will take out the buds. So as carefully as possible, I go in when I can see that a spike is ready with some buds that I can manipulate. And you can see them here. All this has been treated this morning. I just remove the outer sheaths of the buds. If not, then no blooms. And also because the back of the blooms, for some reason, they'll stick around in the back of the blooms. And as much as I don't like to touch my blooms with alcohol, I will take a paintbrush and go around the perimeter. Incredible. So, least favorite would be then Bealara, Tortile, and any orchid that just attracts bugs and pests over and over again. And just to give you another example regarding pests and orchids and then how they get to my least favorite, you'll see how 
a pest can attack an orchid and you treat it, and then stuff happens on the leaves. Even though you're treating it topical and you try to stay on top of it and not drown or kill the leaf off. Yeah, well, Eria hyacinthoides is one of those that is loved by mealybugs, especially on new growth. So same routine, paintbrush, alcohol, but then the leaves come out a little bit damaged because you've treated them. And yeah, it doesn't exactly make it a favorite orchid of mine, to be honest. If there was a ranking, this would be number one, along with all the Schwerter weaklings. But I'm just gonna go with categories now. And for the last category that propels orchids into least favorites, I will just take full responsibility because that is my thing and it reflects badly on me. Then I look at the orchid and then I see it reflecting badly on me. <laughs> but that is my lack of judgment when it comes to the environment and including the lack of judgment of the competence of my growing skills which I direct then towards the Fias, Tankan Billier, a gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. The orchid is not the problem. The problem is me. But she is one of the examples that reminds me of my incompetence. So Fias Tankan Billier would be in that category. Another candidate for in your face, you don't know what you're doing is Vanda Chao Praia and the Papilio Nante that is on the same totem pole right there. Because I thought I could do this. My environment, my climate, my care, all appropriate, I can do this. Well, I was very wrong about that. And that is, goes to show that it has never bloomed for me and it is just growing, growing, growing. And it reminds me of the fact that I do not know what I'm doing and I misjudged my competency completely. Well, those are my five categories and um, the orchids that give an example of what I'm talking about. I know I did a bit of a hybrid thing there and I hope I didn't disappoint with the request, Michael. But again, I buy an orchid because I want it. I try to love it despite the frustrations it poses. It doesn't make it a least favorite, but there are categories that will definitely um, get me frustrated about this specific orchid. And then it's up to me to make it work or let it go. I hope that this gave you some insight and everybody else who was watching, I really appreciate that you did. My cat Leah Dinard Blue Heaven is not one of those that fits in this category, but it's a nice little, nice little way to end a video that kind of focused on the negatives. But thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate it. It got me thinking. I adapted it a little bit. So I thank you very, very much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.